Hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Rick Thompson to the stage. Uh, Rick is a partner at uh, Signia Venture Partners. Uh, he's a veteran of both the uh, game industry and venture investing. Oh, and uh, before I forget, uh, uh, Michael Ehrenberg, who was uh, going to talk about pitching your game to Apple, um, uh, had a schedule uh, sort of malfunction, and uh, we have rescheduled Michael for 9.40 a.m. tomorrow in, uh, in the uh, Games Beat University room. So we are uh, trying to uh, get folks to show up for that one. Yeah, apparently, there was a big crowd waiting for him, but uh, he's, uh, he's coming tomorrow for sure. Anyway, uh, thanks, Rick. Um, so Rick's uh, exits during his investor career have exceeded $6 billion. And uh, he's not been idle, actually, in the last uh, um, few weeks. He added another billion dollars to that uh, just a few weeks ago. So Rick uh, is uh, uh, at Signia. It's an early-stage venture firm in Menlo Park. Uh, the firm recently closed a new fund to invest in a variety of markets, uh, including games. And his uh, recent gaming exits include Playdom, uh, acquired for Disney in 2010 for $763 million. Funzio, acquired by uh, Gree for $210 million. Sea Games, uh, acquired by Glue for $100 million in July. And Funplus, uh, acquired by uh, the Chinese holding firm Zhongyi, I think I'm, I'm mispronouncing <laughs> that, Zhongyi, uh, holding for $960 million. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start uh, with my final question for Rick. Uh, at the, begin at the beginning here, because I want to make sure we answered this, but uh, what advice can you as an investor uh, give to aspiring game entrepreneurs? Um, um, thank you, uh, first, for the chance of being here. This has uh, been a terrific show today, and uh, I heard some really good things. Um, my answer to that question has really uh, changed over the years. Um, you know, back in you know, 2008 and 2009, I was trying to get anybody I knew who knew anything about uh, marketing or writing code to go into the games business. Um, now, when people come and ask me you know, whether or not uh, they should uh, start up a new games company or do something else, uh, my answer is always something else. Um, you know, the, uh, the world's changed. Um, you know, the opportunistic days of, of free users and easy money is kind of long past us. And, uh, and I'm actually kind of glad to see, um, you know, that uh, the transformation take place. Um, you know, and so um, people who are really, you know, that we're looking for are the ones who are, who are born to build games, uh, who really enjoy games, who uh, understand their users, who really empathize and are building games that they want to play. Um, you know, it, it's it's you know it, the opportunity's never been larger for, for those types of people. The um, you know, building a successful um, uh, gaming company also uh, really requires uh, um, respect, not just you know for the users, but also for the team in the process. We have you know um, a number of talents that are really required to build a game. Um, you need a you know creative vision, um, the person who really you know a world class game designer who really understands what fun is, and I don't hear that word uh, often enough in my pitches. I mean, where's the fun? Um, and then a, a technical person, of course, who can you know deliver uh, appropriate technology uh, to make sure that the user has a, a delightful, seamless experience, um, and a business person who can um, you know treat capital as precious. Uh, invest, you know, in the right places at the at the right times, and take a, a long-term view of the world. We're not investing in companies that are looking to make, uh, you know, um, quick hits and, and quick exits. We're we're in this for the long term. Uh, companies that we're investing in today, um, you know, we're expecting that they may not come to market uh, for two or three years. Uh, the good news there is that you know you have plenty of time to to do things right. It's it's the, the gold rush is over. Um, the market continues to explode, but for um, those who really great, create great experiences for their users, uh, the, you know, the, the potential has never been greater. So what have you heard that uh, has resonated with you uh, today from uh, earlier speakers? I'm sorry? What have you heard uh, today from earlier speakers that's resonated with you? Oh, uh, things I really liked <laughs> because they, they, they reinforce uh, Signia's view. Um, I really liked, uh, um, you know, uh, Michael Pachter kind of coming out and saying that uh, um, in spite of the fact that this may be a record console year, uh, ultimately, um, you know, they're on a, uh, um, a path to extinction. Um, that means that, uh, you know, the platforms that we're largely betting on 
uh, you know, mobile uh, connected TV or, or platforms for the, for the future. So that was really terrific. Um, I always find uh, Owen Mahoney really refreshing um, because he shares, uh, um, I think, the, the view that we do is that you know, the reason our, our, our growth rates are as slow as there are is, is we have a supply problem. Um, you know, we're not seeing a whole lot of turnover in, uh, um, in the top apps, and why is that? Um, a lot of developers you know, complain about discovery, and, and um, I don't buy that, Owen doesn't buy it. It's really that we're not building you know, games that are strong enough um, to really you know, capture people's attention, to really engage them, and, uh, and make them want to come back for more. So FunPlus was this uh, well-kept secret. Can you uh, tell us more about that and how you got involved with it? Oh, um, Signia is um, you know, a, a Bay Area f uh, firm. We have two offices, both in the Bay Area. Um, it's a global business and very important to be able to uh, operate cross-border. Uh, when we get involved in an international deal, um, it's either because you know, one of the um, um, investors um, wants to form a syndicate with a U.S. partner, or the entrepreneur is thinking about, well, you know, how can they really increase their chances in North America? In, in the case of U+, we were very fortunate to have been invited in by a, a GSR, which is a, a China-oriented fund, and uh, they were looking for a firm that could help them um, open up a, a San Francisco office and ultimately um, help them with, with their U.S. strategy. Um, on, on that front, I, you know, um, we, we over-delivered. Uh, my founding partner at, uh, at Signia, Dan Fiden, um, not only opened up their San Francisco office, but is now uh, running their, their global strategy. <laughs> yeah. Lost Dan to, to a very big company now. Um, so Signia uh, uh, recently invited 18 CEOs from China to, to come to a football, 49ers football game at Levi's Stadium in, San Francisco, er, in Santa Clara. Um, so uh, what was that all about, Mike? Um, you know, I mean, there's no bigger game in the U.S. than football, and there's no better place to see it than San Francisco and the 49ers. Um, so it was about having fun. Uh, we also had uh, um, you know, a dozen or so uh, uh, local uh, entrepreneurs, uh, mostly in the gaming space. And it's a, a you know, sort of a, a casual, low-key way uh, for people to get to know each other and uh, ultim ultimately learn. Um, the sense that, you know, is, that we have here is that we're, we're years behind China in terms of free-to-play. Um, and one of the, you know, um, you know, and we've also gone sideways in, in catching up with China through our experience and uh, uh, when users were free. I don't know if you remember, remember those days when you know, we had an infinite supply of free users and the key to success was, was viral marketing and spam. And uh, we developed a sort of a culture here of, um, of analytics, uh, A-B testing, and really neglected understanding the user. And so bringing these people together is a way of, 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 of cross-fertilization for you know, practices, what's, what's working, uh, our Chinese uh, um, um, entrepreneurs, you know, for the most part, have seem to be taking a longer-term view. Uh, they put uh, um, engagement, fun uh, first, and uh, that's something that, that we selfishly we want to see kind of rub off in our community. And uh, ultimately, um, um, this is a global business. That's what the whole you know conference here is about, and it's about being able to go cross-border and understanding. Um, what is happening in uh, um, different markets is, is, is important to both parties. Relationships um, take a long time to develop, and ultimately, you know, pu good publishing relationships, good partnerships, uh, outsourcing, localization, you know, those things are best done on you know, when the relationships are developed over time and you have a, a chance to really know your partner. So uh, about uh, mobile games, uh, where are we in terms of the hype cycle, in terms of you know, when it starts out very promising, everybody invests in it, uh, then it slows down and peters out. Uh, you know, how do you, how do you feel about all the money going into mobile gaming right now? Ah, uh, it's a good question, and um, time will tell. Um, I personally think that uh, um, you know, we're, we're still suffering um, a little bit of of, of a hangover, uh, certainly in the, in the in the in the you know the public markets, which inve private investors pay a lot of attention to. It's like um, a hangover before the party, right? Yeah, you know, a hangover from you know, high expectations for Zynga. Um, big disappointment, you know, the model's busted, it doesn't work. 
Uh, so um, hi highly suspicious of other companies offering a, a free to play and having sustainable, durable businesses. And I think the, um, you know, the same tactics to, to the most part were a lot of um, social gaming developers went into mobile um, and there was a, a huge vacuum of games. So it was a bit, little bit of a, of a gold rush and we put a lot of titles on. There's what, over a million uh, apps on the App Store today. Um, most of them aren't very good. Um, and so um, I think the, um, the practices have been um, uh, trying to, you know, more opportunistic and um, you know, extracting cash from customers that, you know, where people don't necessarily want to pay, but, you know, perhaps they're induced or tricked into spending. So I think the, you know, it, it's, growth has been about 20%, but the, the, it should be much higher. We should be approaching China's growth rates if we could deliver quality product. So that's why we're really investing in, in mobile gaming is for, you know, quality products because we, we, we actually think there's a, there's a huge uh, um, undersupply. So for this global game industry, where are the M&A opportunities or the investment opportunities? Uh, it's, um, I, <laughs> you get surprised uh, every, every, um, every day and it, it's changing constantly. I think until uh, uh, the uh, Twitter acquisition uh, by Amazon and then uh, um, um, you know, Minecraft going to Microsoft, if it weren't for those two deals, it's, it's been all China. Uh, for the last few years. Twitch, right, not Twitter. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Twitch, Twitch <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, there's been two deals recently that are gonna change all, this, all the numbers, but aside from those, last two years have been you know, going to China. Uh, EA and uh, Zynga in like, 2010, 11, made up something like 40% of, of US acquisitions, and they've been pretty quiet. Uh, US media companies are um, at a different stage of the, of the pendulum. Uh, Warner Brothers has found uh, a lot of success um, with organically building their own studio and they're licensing some content. Um, so it doesn't appear that they're very active in the market. Uh, Disney is, uh, is going down the licensing road. So you know, it seems like there's US platforms, <laughs> made a couple acquisitions, how many more they make, I don't know. Uh, but from um, a, a general trend, it still feels like China. Uh, and you know, the simple fact is, is they, they have cheaper access to capital. Uh, they've been able to um, get uh, valuations in the public markets that uh, appreciate uh, the fact that they have enduring uh, sustainable business models and, and the West is skeptical. So until we actually get uh, um, more pre you know, companies that are really, um, uh, the more public markets believe can really endure in the West, I, I think that uh, they'll, you know, they'll be relatively quiet. So what, what have you learned about the strategies of the buyers here like uh, Tencent or Alibaba? Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, Amazon. Uh, um, yeah, we haven't um, done any deals with 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 any of those companies. I think the um, the one thing that's probably true is that occasionally, you know, a, a, a major platform, um, you know, comes up with a um, a strategy shift, and they they look for the best company on the market. Um, but more often, uh, it's it's really relationships that are driven over time where they can, you know. Um, acquire a company that is not necessarily an exit for the seller. Uh, in an ideal world, um, they're looking to you know, um, acquire companies that they can bring into their culture and, uh, and help them grow and share in a common vision. So it's, it's more of a, of, a, of a merger from the seller's point of view than it is really, really an exit. So I think there was a year a couple years ago maybe where you guys made eight game investments and I'm, I'm not sure how many a year you're generally making, but um, but you know, does it does it feel like there's anybody else who's sort of a peer in, on that level? Uh, and why is it that so many investors are are not putting money into games? Well, we're investing, looking forward, thinking there's a, a lot of potential going forward, and that we're you know we may have a um, dips, um, and, and it's it's not a straight line up and then a straight line down. It's it's a bit more of a of a roller coaster. We th we think we're still ultimately going going up. And we're fortunate at Signia that there's perhaps only a, a, um, a small handful of other investors that have the experience in the industry and the sort of historical perspective to be able to uh, confidently invest. Um, most uh, investors in you know, the uh, um, um, era of, uh, of, of what's called Zynga um, got their fingers burnt and found that you know, it wasn't as easy as it seemed and they you know, are staying away from what they perceive to be a hit-driven business. Now that uh, um, 
you know, the, those have been shaken out. Um, you know, the Mitch Lasky's, uh, um, Phil Sanderson, David Gartner are all excellent investors that, that have history in the sense of, uh, of, a, of a perspective and, and can add value. Uh, the good news for, for, for us as early stage investors is that there are a number of, of later stage funds that uh, um, will invest in you know, what looks like to be you know, um, um, winners. So what's it going to take for the public markets to value game companies uh, more enthusiastically? Uh, it's going to take uh, um, proving that they can deliver EBITDA on growth um, predictably and sustainably. And, um, and that is, that is you know, surely uh, the Chinese companies um, have been able to you know, command that kind of respect. And I have no doubt that, uh, that we'll see that in the West. It's, it's likely, likely still a few years away and um, who those companies are yet to be seen. Your scarf uh, has, uh, has some explanation behind it, right? So, uh, you, um, you were the first investor in 2012 in Super Evo Megacorp, and uh, that was the only uh, gaming company featured last week at Apple's keynote. Um, and that's pretty remarkable for a company with a game that has not uh, shipped yet as well. Um, so how do you, how do you tell, tell us about those guys and how do you, how do you sort of find the next super evil megacorp? Uh, well, we, we look for uh, very uh, forward fashion entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, the, uh, um, you know, and what we love about uh, of, you know, super evil is um, this company has been in development for two and a half years. Um, their um, game has been in Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam for maybe nine months and, and they still haven't put up a store. And, um, and I'm actually you know, looking on uh, um, the, in the conversations, and their users are wanting that store to open. They're looking for an opportunity to really invest in the game. And that is, that's really delightful. The um, company culture is, 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 is growing you know, slowly. Uh, their CFO is a uh, ranked Dota player. Uh, and, and it permeates the culture that this is all, what they're all about is, is delighting their customers. And uh, the you know, sort of investment theme that, that we're looking forward with you know, at, at Signia is you know, if, if uh, the console is, is declining, um, the hardware on mobile is just gets better and better and better. Uh, metal opens up you know, a whole new potential for uh, graphics and performance. Uh, so the growth in uh, uh, mid-core and serious games for gamers is, is a trend uh, that we're playing, playing for. So, uh, what are you going to do with that new fund as well? well we're about 30% uh, gaming. We're, we're really looking for um, you know, entrepreneurs that uh, um, you know, have to build games, that really understand their genre, um, that want to pull together uh, the team and the culture to, to play for the long run. Cool. Do we have any uh, questions in the audience for Rick? Oh, just just uh, for uh, to set it straight, uh, um, my wife has ordered a bronze iPhone six, and uh, I've ordered a, a, a six plus in space gray. So it's just a <laughs> uh, right there. Do we have a mic printer at all? Uh, there you go. I know it's a really cliched question, uh, but assuming that we ignore the advice to not go into games, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs <laughs> setting out in the mobile gaming space? <laughs> um, commit uh, um, completely. Um, you know, choose your partners and your co-founders really carefully and make sure that uh, um, you, you have you know, the, you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to come before funding, but uh, um, pulling together a complete team um, one, of the, one of the terms I haven't uh, um, heard a whole lot today, which I'm actually delighted by, is, is customer acquisition. And you know, paid acquisition is, is, uh, um, is something that's really um, allergic, that investors are allergic to. And having an ability to really tap into a community of, of active users where you really know who those users are and a, a way of bringing them on board as your evangelist is, is really critical. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, the industry has um, a lack of, you know, capital. You know, not a lot of capital going to early stage, but there's also not a lot of talent. So, you know, do, create something that you really believe in, that uh, um, you fully understand, and uh, um, can um, uh, get into the, uh, you know, the, the soul of the user, 
and, and develop something for the long term. Um, and, and then find, find investors you know, who, who understand and get it. All right. Thank you to the $6 billion rand. <laughs> Thank you.